and, and uh, I loved you, you you did that break breakdown before because ultimately I think you mentioned the ADA even though it didn't contemplate um uh websites when it was formed obviously you were talking about the DOJ and how they're interpreting and the fact is that it is a real thing and it is considered and but I think people are still and that I think this comes down to practice uh, pra practitioners who don't know right or they're only doing certain kind of ADA claims so the website thing was like yeah no it's no it's not in the statute doesn't it's not covered and and I think you would be um, you've done a great job explaining. No, if, if it's seen as a public accommodation, which it is now, and it's been interpreted that way, guess what? You're going to have to do it. So, second step, I think people falter at is they, and I've heard this from multiple attorneys and firms, and say they they all say WC, but like I haven't asked them what does that mean. A lot of them like, like I wouldn't be able to tell you. I mean, I think you're the first person that I've met that actually can knowledgeably and intelligently tell me. Here's what you need to do. Here's what it was involved. Well, and and. Um, the legal standard is meaningful access. It's not WCAG performance. A lot of people um, conflate WCAG with the law. Sometimes oh, so I'm going to pause you there. What do you, what do you mean? So uh, this is, I think, really a key important. You mentioned it several times in the video. What do you mean by meaningful access? Because I love that concept, how, you, how you've defined it. Well, that's a diff it's difficult to it's difficult to de uh, define, right? It's like it's similar to substantial compliance. Like, well, well what does that mean? Um, but I think is that generally someone is able to access and enjoy the website and the experience without any um, any significant um, impediment or a barrier to access. So, like you know, it, whereas someone you know, if we if I have an infographic that is critical to um, the information that is needed, and but I don't have an, a description of that infographic, well. That could be an outright barrier to access, right? Because I need to know that information on the infographic. Or um, if I'm trying to purchase a product and I cannot tell um, how many how many of a quantity of that product there are, that could be a, a barrier to access. But whereas um, you know other other accessibility considerations, it might slight. Inconvenience. Let's say my color contrast ratio is 4.49 to 1, whereas the WCAG threshold is 5 to 4.5 to 1. That's not, I have not, there's not been a violation of the ADA there. There's still meaningful access. So there's, it's like, there's a large continuum on that. Yeah, and I, and a lot of the template uh, template complaints will say there's a barrier to access. I'm reading. I'm 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 vision impaired, or I I'm um you know cannot speak and I cannot hear, or I'm and so they kind of use those broad. And I think a lot of the sites do fail on that aspect because if they've not been updating, I know that's how a lot of websites can get themselves in trouble.